All right. Well, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for jumping on our session. I know it's been a, a long morning already, and um, I want to welcome everyone. I hope everyone is staying well, and um, you and your families are well. Okay. Um, what we're going to do here is let me just introduce myself. I'm Darren Ford. I'm the CEO of Powered by Professionals. We're a professional fundraising and event management firm based out of New York City, and we do work nationally. Uh, our organization uh, focuses on three key areas of fundraising, uh, event management, and technology slash uh, back office support. And what we do on the fundraising side is really strategic, trying to help nonprofits understand how to position themselves, how to fundraise through major events, how to build their boards, you know, and really engage their volunteers. And on the event side, we do full service event management solutions for our nonprofits, everything from galas to run walks to concerts, really any type of major fundraising event that you're looking to put on. And then the last piece is really technology and understanding how to uh, kind of run your office and what technologies you can Im implement and use to raise money. So what we're going to talk about today uh, at this session is, um, is we're going to really focus on virtual fundraising. And when I say that, this one, we're going to go a little bit more into event fundraising, but we'll talk about other things as well. But um, but really, we're going to lead with the event fundraising and really talk about what nonprofits are doing now, how we how we how we're seeing them kind of transition or pivot, as everyone likes to say, to these virtual events, and also what other what other options are available. So what I'm going to do, I think everyone can see my screen. So we'll um, I think we're going to jump right in. So, all right, um, all right, so there you go. So going virtual, transforming your in-person event into a virtual fundraising event. And um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, with the task at hand is how do we create a virtual event to replace the traditional in-person event that, uh, that all these different organizations are, are struggling to replace. And it's important to do something. What, I, what some organizations have done is they just are doing nothing. They canceled and they're gonna do nothing. I, I don't agree with that approach. I think you need to do something. Uh, you have to decide what's the best thing for your organization, but definitely doing something is important to keep that communication with your donors. And we talk about how your key donors wanna help. They understand what's going on and they're there to support you. So some of the challenges, how do we make a remote event you know, feel social and engaging? How do we take key elements that we love at our live events and we bring them online? And what technology can be used to make all this happen? Um, and how do we set it up in an organized fashion where guests can easily navigate the site? As you, some of you have been, uh, as all of you have been on this um, conference this morning, you know, we're learning. We're not sure how do you go into the networking room? How does the session start? Can I communicate? Can I chat? Can I ask questions? So it's figuring out a platform that people are going to be comfortable with. And it depends when your event is. Is it in three months or is it next week? So um, those are things. And solutions, some people are looking for a combination. Okay, we're, we used to have live events. Going virtual seems very far away. Can we do something in between? So some people are looking at dinner parties. Um, can we have engagement activities where people can connect during the event? And can there be entertainment, something fun at the event? Uh, we're going to replicate aspects of the event that can easily translate, recognize honorees, a virtual program, silent auction. Those are things that we definitely want to include. Um, other options uh, that can be translated, we do a live appeal. We do still need to raise money and people will give money. Don't think people are just going to stop giving money because of everything going on. They understand they, need, they still need to give. Um, we want to make sure the technology, the video conferencing technology, so we, you can hear the people, you can see, can we do live, can we have pre-recorded, um, what kind of platform. Many of you have used auction platforms when you've run your events in the past. Um, so those are different things that uh, you want to look out for. And then some people are using apps. We'll talk about that. And then laying out the event in a clear leading, uh, you know, leading up so people understand what to do. I know Serene and Associates who are hosting today's conference. They send out instructions, and they they have people available throughout the whole program who have been here helping, um, kind of helping us navigate um, this. I know helping the members as well as the speakers, which has been great. Okay, 
So um, next thing. So what we did here is we started what my company has been doing over the last three or four months is studying all the platforms out there. There's so many options. We, we actually broke it down to about 25 that we really um, you know, sank, sank our teeth into. And then we've narrowed that down even further. Here's, here's some of the, the ones that we're still reviewing and kind of testing and demoing. And we've gotten access to the back end. And, um, you know, there are new platforms coming out every day. And that is a kind of an ongoing thing. And then Zoom can certainly be used for, you know, for doing these events as well. It just depends what you're trying to do with the event. So you want to, elements to consider when putting an event together is you want a custom, customizable look and feel, enable individual, enables individuals to join tables. Some people are looking to have interaction during the event. You know, we're not having any interaction right now, which is frustrating to a degree <laughs> as a speaker. But, um, you know, is there a social land that um, Sereni had in this? I was able to meet a few people there in between the, the sessions, which was great. Uh, which, which is pretty cool. And then in the back, there's a backstage. So I'm actually able to talk to Ken and I'm able to talk to the people who are helping run the event in the, while the other sessions are going on, we can have conversations, which is pretty cool. And that for your honoree and for your CEO or your executive director, that's pretty important. The ability to incorporate sponsors, that is critical. And then, um, you know, what's the registration process? How are we collecting the data? Do we have an existing platform? How does that integrate? So there's a lot of people pieces to this and the av available recording of events afterwards you know we want to be able to show the event and leave the event online so people who missed it can see it and then make sure we have technical support in place um all right there we go and it's so the next thing we did was we put together a uh, a chart just didn't want to come up hold on Hold on one second. The chart doesn't, why is this not going forward? Lovely. Okay. Uh, well, the next slide, which doesn't want to happen for whatever reason. What's going on here? Here it is. Um, is a virtual event uh, chart. So basically, we took all those platforms that we were, and we decided to say, what are the things that are critical for the the, the organizations that we're we're working with, um, and what do they need? So so those things included uh, customized branding. Some of them was ticketing. Others was around breakouts and backstage. You know, what are the most important components? And so we started to build this chart out. This is just a, a small version of what we're working on internally. It gives you an idea of some of the things that are uh, that are out there. Um, technology, so they're they're apps. Some I was talking with uh, with some people, and certain people are using apps to do their uh, to do their events. We think you can you can incorporate apps into the event. It depends on what you're trying to do. We don't want to overcomplicate it for the for the you know the donors and participants. So you want to keep it simple. But there are some great solutions out there, and depending on what your event is doing, like scheduling the schedule of events, uh, if there are breakout events, if you want to highlight participants or bios, an app is a great way. So while people are looking at their computer, they can be on their phone seeing the different information that's available. Uh, another thing that we're seeing people uh, are definitely want to incorporate is auctions and appeals because that's how they're going to raise money. One of the ways they're going to raise money. So two of the platforms that we've worked with a lot and have pretty good, uh, are, are set up very well to handle this new virtual world are OneCause and GiveSmart. In addition to auction capabilities, it, it has a texting capability for an appeal. So what's nice of people um, can communicate while watching the virtual event and can get, and can get we can text them and encourage them to give and give again. So there's a, a lot of components there and creating a landing page so that people can see all the different items that are available and um, and go from there. And what and what and what you know integrate with the technology you have. A lot of these do. One cause actually is building out a full service solution. So that's something that we're looking at as well. That's coming out in a in a few weeks. I think in mid July is when they said their their streaming component is going to kick in. Right now we're looking at two platforms and kind of bringing them together uh, to do our event. So the events that we're planning for are about 20 events that we're doing this fall. 
All right. Okay, so let's start talk about the logistics and the attendee experience. Leading up to the event, um, you have a, it's a great opportunity, pre-event emails with instructions so people understand what, what they need to do, making sure the honorees and speakers, they were great. They actually walked me through this the other day, so make sure I know how to use the technology. Um, you wanna make sure people have uploaded everything that they need to. We wanna test the videos, we wanna test the live feeds, we wanna test the internet connection. Clearly highlight the networking opportunities so people understand what what is uh, what is possible that night and what they can do. Compiling a digital journal is a great way to raise money and also to thank your sponsors. Allowing individuals to submit congratulatory messages if you have maybe individuals who are receiving awards that night. And incorporating social media um, and the run of show, what, what's planned for that evening so people know is, is another great component and important. So one thing that I mentioned very briefly earlier is some people are trying to do a combo event, right? Let's do a virtual event, but let's have some people together. So one thing that we kind of like, and we, which a lot of organizations are excited about is doing these small kind of like mini dinner parties going on while the virtual event is happening. And that can be hosted by board members, that can be hosted by key donors, can be hosted by sponsors. And it's, a, it's actually a great way to fundraise. It's actually more, probably the most effective way to fundraise it if you get the right person that's willing to do it. Again, it depends on what the world we're living in and if you're able to do it. But if you are, it's a nice, it's a nice combo. And um, what it'll enable you to do is you invite, they can, you can even set up a matching situation where you challenge that donor who's hosting to challenge their friends to match a certain amount that they're willing to give. So you can get very creative with this. Um, VIP sponsors can choose from a few catered options. You could potentially provide food for those people who are hosting, especially if they've given over a certain amount of money. You can do that through partnerships. I'm not going to read this whole slide, but jump around here. A partnership through Seamless and Delivery.com where you can get a, a coupon and or like some discount because you're sending all your guests to, to, to do that. Or you can work with an actual caterer, like I briefly mentioned, and you can send pre organize meals to the homes. Another thing that I uh, was talking to a number of printers about is you actually can send a box. The food that's sent there can be sent in a box, which is branded by all the sponsors or your organization. So this, there's a lot of different ways to incorporate this and make it a, and actually help out different components of your event. Um, additional suggested activities for house parties could be providing guests before and with cocktail and dinner recipes. So you might, so people are at home alone can all cook the same meal. You can have people submit their picture of their meal. I know my daughter has to submit every time she makes one of these like smoothies, she has to like send a picture to all her friends. But you know, you can do that with the event on, on how their dinner came out. So, um, you know, you can have a prize for the, the dinner that looks the best or something like that. You could have, you the sponsors can get certain decor for their home. You can play around with this. There's, there's unlimited opportunities with this stuff. Logistics and attendee experience. So um, social media, we all, we're all using social media, but we feel with the virtual world that we're now kind of thrust into, social media is gonna be able to uh, really engage people leading up to the evening. And it gives you such a great opportunity to push things out in advance. It could be a quick commercial about the event. It could be a message from one of your sponsors who's excited to be a part of the event. It could be um, pictures from, from last year's event, talking about this year, you could, have, you could post tips, um, virtual gala tools throughout the week leading up, recipes, you could have, um, you know, you could have a, a wine tasting or, or some other fun, uh, ex, you know, suggestions so people have the same wines and can set it up. If people buy a certain level ticket, you can send them the wines in advance. That could be another way to, to make it fun. Um, Set a friendly competition like we talked about on the other slide, but do it through social media. The winner would be announced at the event, tag others to get involved, you know, come up with something creative and, and make it catchy. And that could be, that could really become very viral. Um, so here, here's an example of a run of show. This is a more extensive run of show. Um, the, um, the, 
so this is a two hour show. You don't necessarily need to do a two hour event. This is just showing you all the different things. We're going to walk through each of these in detail. But really, even in this, really what you have here is about a 45 minute to 50 minute program. And everything else is kind of social um, for people if they want to. Like while you're doing those dinner parties, people could actually be at home breaking out in one of these engagements engagement activities while they're having the dinner party and socializing face to face for people who are individually at home they can they can go into an engagement activity which we'll get to in the next slide and um and then it, you could have a you could have different groups we'll talk about this in a minute all right okay um, and then just so you guys know if you do have questions and you may have been asking i've, I've kind of moved the question thing off the screen for me so i can focus on the slides but Allison and, and Scott and my staff are actually answering the questions for you as you're asking them. If you have anything specific, please ask it. They'll try to answer it for you live. And then, um, and then at the end, we can, we can talk more about some of the questions if we have time. So um, virtual evening. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're gonna welcome everyone to the 2020 Virtual Gala. Remind everyone that we have a text component. And this is how you give. Again, we want to remind people all night that there's an opportunity to give money. We, I mean, this is a fundraising event. Very important to drive that home. People are not doing this for the heck of it. They're doing it because they want to support the organization. You have to give them multiple opportunities to give. I've actually been surprised online. Uh, some of these, some of the big ones that went on in the beginning. Even, um, not to say Robin, but some of the others. They weren't like asking to give enough. There wasn't like a URL on the bottom. There weren't in, there wasn't information to easily give. I, I thought that was a missed opportunity for a number of these. I was even talking about the Hamilton show, you know, that's going on this weekend. A uh, great opportunity to raise money for a certain causes. I don't know if they're going to incorporate it, but you know, great opportunity why you have this engaged audience. Uh, recommend that people take a moment to eat dinner during the evening program. Um, that's like a while the event is going on. You can, um, you know, that that's when I would suggest they eat so that they're they're not eating while there's there's activities that they can participate in. Remind everyone about the silent auction and reiterate how to navigate the platform and making sure people know how to use it is critical. And that is what your MC needs to do from the beginning and throughout the night. Um, we actually created a mock video, and if anyone wants, um, what I'll try to do is actually send it out to everyone who's on this call. Uh, a video that we put together about a three to four minute video that enables you to um, kind of see what this all looks like live, you know, in three to four minutes. Um, and then, um, yeah, we also have the site virtualnonprofitevents.com, virtualnonprofitevents.com that you can go to, which has a lot of information. There are blog posts on virtual events. There are, um, there's the video and there's some other things, other key nuggets that you can use in building out your virtual um, kind of platform and um, plan. Okay. So let's get social. So uh, engagement activities. Now this is, this is a fun area. If you decide to do this and you don't have to do this, and some people are trying to do less, uh, you know, as little as possible, some people are recording the whole event. So they're doing a full recording of their event. I don't think that's the way to go. I think it's a missed opportunity to engage your big donors. And in this time of, um, you know, a, a donor centric fundraising where you want to you know, really connect with your donors and you want to really show them where their money's going and work with your key donors, especially that is so critical right now. Really work with your, your key donors um, because they have them feel important and have them feel as if they're kind of carrying you through this, this challenging time and they want to. people love to be made to feel as they're making an impact so help them feel that way and allow them give them opportunities to so this is a fun way just to keep them engaged keep others engaged people some people want this some people don't you don't have to do it make it optional um, there could be a comedian improv session paint and sip is something that we've seen and we've done uh, a mixologist is always fun get people drinking the more they drink hopefully the more they give uh, you know, there's there's all these other options and at different levels. So if you have a, people pay a certain amount, they can get access to a certain area. If there's a, a VIP area, maybe to hear the CEO speak or hear a key, uh, a special guest keynote speaker, 
Uh, so there's a, there's a number of ways to go here. And also you can potentially involve your community by getting some of these instructors who are looking for work, getting them involved, which would be great. You know, any way you can in include others. So um, evening program. So video and collage. So we have uh, there's different video options. You can pre-record and assemble by production company. So we definitely recommend doing some video pre-record. Actually, we recommend pre-recording the whole thing but then doing some of it live, but having that as a backup pre-recorded session, God forbid there's a problem, you can actually go to the, the people who are kind of in your command center, can go and then put up the pre-recorded version if needed. But um, you can do group videos. If you have a message you're trying to get across and you have a great group of people, if it's a volunteers, if it's donors, if it's, um, if it's people that you help in the community and getting like quick recordings from them and putting it together into a group video could be really impactful. And a collage or mosaic, some people are doing that to get a message across, take photos. And this is a picture of, this is a lot of different photos right here. I don't know if you can see my screen. We are one, we are together. So that is made up of, you know, hundreds of photos to get that picture. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Okay, the awards. So th this is this is the part where people are like, do I let my honoree speak? Do I have? Do I pre-record my honoree? Do, do my honoree wants to feel like they're at least involved. So what we're suggesting here is doing a um, is doing a pre-record of like a full interview of the honoree, and then having a videographer kind of splice it and break it down to a shorter uh, acceptance speech, and then maybe just having the honoree say hello for ten or fifteen seconds and thank everyone for their support of the organization and for the award but that's it like that because you just the more people that are, are live you're going to ask for, you're asking for more problems so um we are also talking about having a command center command center is being used in some of these events and what that is really is having one location where a few of the key people or anyone who's going to be live is located at that location if they can be um the ceo the staff there's better cameras there's better lighting, there's all the necessary things to make the event a success and to limit the, the chance of a problem at that event. And some people are doing like mini, like 50 to 100 people or 25 people at the, at the actual venue. The only problem with that is the cost. So it's to figure out what the cost is gonna be for you. You may not wanna do that, but that may be an option or even at a smaller venue, just so it looks and feels. And there are some actually virtual backgrounds you can do as well that can give you the feel like you're on this fancy stage. Um, normally I have a backdrop with our logos on it, but uh, Excel Events is still working on adding that feature. Uh, you've seen it on Zoom. Some of the platforms have, <clears throat> have that feature that you can add. Um, so yeah, I think I covered all of this. Yes, I did. All right. All right, um, so some social sessions and networking. So some people are saying, well, are we have a sit down event. We want everyone to be able to sit at a table with each other, talk to people. We don't want them to just be stuck in their home having no communication. So giving people an opportunity to connect with others and talk about the event is a really cool function. We actually incorporated that into our video that I'll send you guys so you can see what that looks like. But basically it's like little tables that you see on the top here and you can move yourself and drop yourself into a table or you drop immediately into a table. And then it breaks into almost like a little Zoom session where, you're, um, where you can have a conversation with others. And, um, and you can do that to, to, to fit your organization, what your mission is. It could be educational, it could be on current events, it could be a, um, on the progress that's going on. People can break into a session and go hear what people have to say. Uh, you can do something that ties into a cause where, uh, you know, either patients who are affected by that cause can talk to other people who are going through it. What's it like to be at home during all this? Um, people at dinner parties have the option to join the virtual conversation or that's when they can talk with, amongst themselves at the table before they quiet down to watch the actual virtual program. So logistics and attendee experience, we have um, additional entertainment ideas. There's a virtual photo booth. There's face in the whole photo option to give fun, you know, fun element. That would be like dropping your face into, uh, into a celebrity's body. 
and then uh, that could be funny if you do it with some of the key donors. You can have an after party. You can have a virtual karaoke for your fun guests. Um, closing the event you can have an event long competition that culminates with the winners being announced at the event. You know who made the best signature meal or costume or who decorated their home. Thank everyone again. Let them know that you can find resources throughout the evening. Make sure they know how to give. I want to ask them again to donate throughout. And then options to distribute a post-event survey for guests in order to obtain feedback. I want to do probably a pre and a post-event survey to kind of make sure you're doing what your guests are looking for. Um, virtual sponsorship. So there's, there's a lot of different ways to go here on the sponsorship front. One thing that we've seen is that there's actually probably more branding opportunities than maybe at a live event between the chance to potentially brand a box that goes to people's homes to uh, virtual backgrounds that you can have on certain uh, speakers or videos that you put together. You can have some of them, some of the technologies allow you to have logos going across the screen, almost like a scrolling thing. Um, there's other opportunities to do messages. So if a top donor, you want to give the donor a 10 second commercial, that can help you transition from your MC to your honoree. And then that commercial is about that organization or the or they're saying something positive about you guys that brought to you by blah 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 company and um yeah i think it'd be very very effective we did it in our little virtual video we put together we, we used information about our company to transition but you can do it with with donor with sponsors is a great idea and or messaging about your organization getting your mission and vision and all those things branded into these people as they're watching And then um, the next piece is the thoughts for the consideration. You know, how would you ensure that this feels like your event, branding beyond the standard event signage? On a, on a PDF form, we need to send out you know, a recipe, a pamphlet, know before you go. Um, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're getting everything out. You, you can brand, again, the logos in that scenario. Enhancing the digital journal is another, another opportunity that we mentioned. Uh, visuals behind the speakers during the opening. Uh, like I talked about that already, presentations and closing. Uh, update the leadership, use organization branded virtual background. Um, so those are those are kind of other ways to make it feel like a GR event, right? That's that's critical that it has to feel like we're at the XYZ Foundation event. Uh, bottlenecks and challenges that you want to be aware of. You want to be setting up and coordinating all the different social and engagement sessions using too much technology and technical support, um, you know, can be a, a challenge. You want to make sure you have people in place. Uh, I think Serini's done a great job of having people available. And if you ask a question, someone responds right away. We would have phone numbers and emails set up and sent out to you with any challenges. Keeping guests engaged um, and the run of show flowing. And that's why you have to have some live components. Otherwise, people are going to tune out. And addressing people who have already bought tickets for a live event. You know, so if I paid my $500 for a live event, I want to make sure I feel like I'm getting something. So think about what they're going to want. And it could be sending a nice bottle of wine to the home. It could be tied to the meal. It could be at a giveaway at the end of the night. It could be tied to a big sponsor that wants to get into people's homes. And by you offering them that opportunity, they'll provide the gift. So, you know, get creative from that standpoint. But the most important thing, if I could say one thing here, is is talk to your donors. Talk to the key donors that you work with. Ask them what they want to see. Because if they're not happy, they're not going to get behind you. So as challenging as it is at times, you need to understand what they're excited about and what their contacts would get excited about. Because if you have their buy-in, you can do more. You know, that's that's pretty, pretty much how that works. Um just have a couple more slides here, and then we'll take a couple of questions if there are any. So cost savings, uh, I mean, clearly doing a virtual event is less expensive. So from a net standpoint, you're putting yourself in a lot better position to, uh, you know, to make and save money. The, uh, the venue can run, you know, uh, depending on the size of your events, can be astronomical. Some of them may be less than this. And the audio visual alone is, is kind of crazy. Um, <clears throat> But what we're, we're seeing for live for these virtual events is that you can use an app. An app can be costly, but depending on again what the what you're trying to get across in your event and the communication with your donors, 
an app could be appropriate. And there's a lot of different options uh, available there. There's the technology platforms, which I mentioned. There's a ton of them. I showed you some of the logos of some of the lead ones um, that we've we're studying very carefully and working with. And then engagement and engagement activities that that you can spend a lot of money on. Now, you know, it depends what kind of entertainment you're planning on having. Um, but if if you are having uh, entertainment, you you know, work within a budget, create a budget in advance so you kind of know what you're trying to do. Because without that, you know, you're gonna have it's gonna be a little more challenging. Uh, video services, be careful here because I've heard. Some videographers are charging a dramatic amount of money to do the videos, and that's something I would I would just be aware of. You don't have to spend an arm and a leg. You should work with a professional videographer, but just uh, just be careful on how much you spend on that and figure out who's going to kind of who's going to run your run your event, run of show, who's going to produce it, who's going to bring in the fundraising components. Because if you're not raising money, that's that's a big problem. And fundraising is a critical piece of that. Um, so, you know, make sure that you're tying in fundraising and then, um, and then if you want to provide food, which I think is a great idea, if you can integrate some sort of food going to the home or some sort of, or liquid, um, or some sort of alcohol to the home, might be a nice component. And it, and it gets people, reminds them that they're supposed to be at, on the event when that box comes in the mail. And then it also gets you, you know, in their house with your logo and some of your key sponsors. So that is the presentation. This is my information. If you have any questions, uh, my team and I are happy to get on the phone, answer any questions you have. Uh, I think you were all sent this presentation, so you kind of have some, some great ideas to work with and see and think about. And what, what, what we're doing with our, uh, you know, our organization that we work with is that we're presenting the similar, similar presentation to this, and we're kind of seeing what excites them. You know what? What what interests them? What are they looking to? Um, what are they? You know what are they? What do they want to incorporate in their event? So so that's what we've been doing, and then from there, then crafting a, um, a, an event that's going to fit. You know what their event, their organization needs. So that's that, and then let me see if there are any questions that were not answered. If not, I'm going to let people use the bathroom because I know that's always fun. Um, okay, I, I have a question here. We are faced with fall venue asking for cancellation fees. How do we approach the venue to work this out? That's from Jennifer. That's a great question, um, and, I, and I can address it, which is even better. So what I'm seeing, I'm actually just off the phone with a few venues yesterday. What the situation is this. If you have an event um, this fall, and if it was scheduled for the spring and moved to the fall, or if it was scheduled for the fall, Anything through October 31st, you can move that 12 months out at no penalty to you. That is what I heard the city has kind of approved for venues to do. And all the venues I'm talking to have approved that. So I don't know if I made that clear. So if you have an event, say your event's scheduled for October 5th, and you're like, what are we going to do? You can actually move that event 12, up to 12 months out from that date. And with no penalty from a financial standpoint, they will keep your deposits and will just move to the following year when you plan your event, as long as it's within 12 months. Now, if they can't host your event, and we won't know that probably for another 30 to 60 days, you know, maybe 30 to 60 days out from that, that date of your event, they would be responsible for fully refunding you um, the amount that you put down in your deposits because the event would be canceled um, Kind of the, the uh, I can't even pronounce it, but the uh, the out of everyone's control clause. Um, so uh, that that would be that's how. If, if that's not clear, let me know. But I, I literally just got off the phone with two of the venues yesterday about that scenario. Um, and then you know, with outside events, uh, ma mainly the outside events are tied to these different stages. Yeah, uh, I know. I I know the word. I just can't say it, Hillary. But thank you. <laughs> um, the uh, outside events is is tied to the um, is tied to the stages or phases that different cities are having. So I know in Chicago we have we do some stuff in Chicago, and we do some run walks out there. And they're they're at um, they're at phase four. I think they have to be at phase five for us to do our event, or they're going into phase four this week. Um, but you know, everything is changing. This is, it's a, it's a crazy time. We're actually planning a virtual and a live event at the same time. So that's kind of, um, how we've, um, we've handled it. 
Are there any other questions that we can answer? If not, I will say thank you again and appreciate all of you for participating in our session. Okay, would you like to hold an indoor event in October? Or would you hold an indoor event in October? Okay, more questions coming in here, sorry. Um, would you hold an indoor event in October? Um, yeah, I think that's a, a challenging one. I, right now we have one event that's holding out for October, indoor, actually two events that are holding out indoors, but, um, but most have moved to the virtual setting. And it just seems like the inevitable situation here. I don't see how we're having a big indoor event in October in New York, or I don't know what city, or really anywhere, but um, New York especially. So thank you again, and everyone have a great day. Again, if you need any information on us or about this, I'm happy to help. Get my information below.